Hi folks, so in today's video what I wanted to do was to go over a basic survival kit primarily for day hikes. So every time I'm getting ready for a hiking season um, or just for a particular trip, I'll go through and have a rethink of the sort of gear that I carry. What, what I've been doing recently is having a look at the 10 C's of survival, which is something that's promoted by Dave Canterbury and the Pathfinder School in the US. And I think that it's useful to look at these different systems from time to time because they give you a different perspective on the gear that you carry. Um, you look at it from a slightly different angle and perhaps find ways that you can improve what you're doing. So when you set up to be um, going out overnight or from, for multiple weeks, you've covered a lot of the stuff that you need for basic survival anyway with your shelter and your sleep system and what you're wearing and what you're carrying in terms of food and all that. But for day hikes, you're not necessarily prepared for being stuck out in adverse conditions, for example, and having to survive overnight or having to get yourself rescued. So I think for those kind of situations, you need to have some gear with you which is fairly lightweight and easy to carry. It doesn't really make sense to carry a lot of heavy items from my perspective at least, because there's usually a lot of other things that you need to carry as well. For example, when I'm on a day hike, I would typically carry a lot of camera gear, and that's obviously heavy to start with. So I don't want to load myself up with a lot of heavy gear. So I should emphasize uh, on that point, that I'm not trying to set up a system here as a bug out bag, which is a common thing that people talk about, or a system that's going to work for the long term. What I'm looking for is items that will help me survive in the short term till I can get rescued, till I can get home, till I can get back to my vehicle perhaps. So with that in mind, let's go through some of the items that I've come up with using the 10 C's of survival. And I'm going to finish off with two more C's that I think are important to consider. These are probably inherent in the system as a whole, but I just wanted to specifically address them. Okay, so the first C is cutting tool. Now, you need a decent uh, knife of some sort. I've chosen this particular knife here, which is a Topps Brother of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife. I chose this particular one. If I was going to be in a survival situation, I'd want something with a blade that's around about four inches long with a full tang, so a good solid blade that's not going to break if you start hitting it with a piece of wood to, to split timber um, or to, to use it for really heavy tasks and something with a decent edge on it. That would be the main thing I would take. If I, was only, if, I was, if I was limited to one knife, that would be the knife I would carry because it can be used for so many different things. However, if you can carry a little bit more, I would throw in one of these hand saws. This is a, um, a small saw that I bought recently, mainly for working in the garden, but um, it would also be extremely useful for processing wood uh, for making fires. So that's just a small folding saw that um, has a really good cutting edge on it. This one's actually a silky, a silky pocket boy. Now, I've got a small pocket knife here. This is a Leatherman, a multi-tool. Uh, this one doesn't actually have locking blades, which unfortunately is the, the only downside to this. Otherwise, it's a really good tool. It has a pair of scissors. It, it has screwdrivers. Um, it's got a whole range of different things, a little file. It also doesn't have a saw blade on it, but I've got one of these. Now, I've had a whole range of these different Leathermans. Um, this is a really old one, and it's actually the best one I've had. It was one that was given to me by a friend. Uh, all of the others that I bought, the newer ones, have just broken, you know, they've either, the tools on them have snapped or different things have gone wrong with them. Even though it doesn't have the locking blades, I quite like this one. Now, I don't think a multi-tool is, is really that necessary for survival work, but for day-to-day, -day, it's really handy. So uh, I could be working in the garden or something like that, and just having this on my belt is really useful because uh, these pliers are really handy if you've got to use, if you've got to twist or cut wire. Um, it can be used for a whole range of different things. The screwdriver blades are really useful and so forth. I'll just mention one other thing. Um, as I say, if I, was, if I was only taking one, I would take this, um, this knife here because this is a proper 
bushcraft knife. I would add the saw as the second most important item. And if I wanted a backup or something for day-to-day -day use for general, general tasks, I would include a multi-tool like that or possibly something like a Swiss Army knife. I should mention uh, I've actually got some uh, Swiss Army knife scissors uh, and uh, tweezers which I carry in my pocket all the time. So um, it's useful to have those and maybe a toothpick as well if you think that's useful. The second C is combustion. So the items that I'm going to include in this uh, 10 C's kit are a good solid fire steel or ferro rod with a striker, okay? A big one that'll last for a long time. For this everyday carry or day hike pack, I am carrying an additional source of ignition, and that is a Bic lighter, specifically in a waterproof container. Now, I've had problems with Bic lighters before uh, with exposure to water, and that's why I don't tend to carry them for my ultralight gear, but um, this one being in a waterproof container uh, does make it a bit more reliable. And the good thing for a day-to-day -day carry is that you can have a flame uh, which burns for a long time. And it's really good, uh, for example, if you're um, making up um, ropes. Uh, I quite often cut ropes to length and, and use them for making lanyards and things like that. You can actually melt the, the plastic rope quite easily with this and seal the ends and do all those kind of basic job. Tinder is really important. Normally I have these little packs that I carry of tinder and there are other types of tinder that I've used over the years. Uh, one I'm trying here is the Mini Inferno and these are pads about that size uh, which are covered in wax and they burn for quite a while. So tinder is really important because often it's the hardest thing to find. So having something that will burn for quite a while once it's first ignited to help get the fire going is really important. So there's a whole bunch of tinder pads in here and um, you've also got to think about the next fire so um, I've got lots in here that'll last me quite a while but I've also got cotton with me which uh, in a container like this can be used to make char cloth um, or perhaps for charring other materials so they're easy to ignite so your next fire is easy to start. Now I'll mention as well I have other ways of making fire, and this is the same for my ultralight hiking pack. This particular compass doesn't have a magnifying glass on, but my other compass that I carry most of the time does. And I've also got a glass magnifying glass that I carry with me uh, when I'm hiking. So I have actually got more than just my ferro rods. Uh, I've got other ways to, to start fire as well. And the final thing I'll mention with fire, because I'm not planning to stay overnight, I don't have a proper stove with me. So what I've got is just this little tiny solid fuel stove and a few solid fuel tablets so that if I don't have the opportunity to get a proper fire going um, or I just want to boil some water quickly, I can do that. So I can just um, have a, a small flame going to boil water, purify water, or maybe to heat up a meal. The next C is cover. This is where what I carry would vary greatly from somebody who is putting together a bug out bag or something like that, because often people want to carry items that are going to last for a long time. Um, so they might be expecting to be away, away from civilization or away from um, home for a, a week or more, uh, possibly even longer. So. What I'm carrying here is some very basic gear to help survive for maybe a day or a few days, something like that. They're not items that you would use for long-term survival. However, they're very lightweight, and so they're something that you can easily carry in a day pack without weighing yourself down too much. So a lot of the gear that you see for bug out bags and things like that is really super heavy. Whenever I look into the, the weights of these different items, um, you may as well be carrying just your full pack, um, you know, your full ultralight pack with all of your tents and sleeping pads and all that sort of stuff because the weight is quite, quite considerable. So what I've got here is some really basic, not really single use, but items that you wouldn't use for, for extended periods. Now, the first item I've got here is a poncho tarp. 
And this is uh, a good item for cover. This is actually my uh, rain gear that I carry. So if I don't have a rain jacket with me, I can chuck this over the top. It'll cover me, it'll cover my pack, my camera gear, all that sort of stuff. But it also works as a proper tarp that you can use for shelter. So you can use, use it to build a, a small shelter, either a lean-to or a A-frame shelter over the top of you. So the three key things that you need are something to sleep under, something to sleep in, and something to sleep on. So this will be the sleep under. This protects you from the rain and, and the other elements. Now I've thrown in a few pegs. You can make pegs, but they're so light you may as well just carry a few. I've only got four here, um, but I could make more if I needed them, or I could tie off to trees and things like that. So those two items together will allow me to create a shelter of some sort. Now, I've also got this here, which is a blizzard survival bag. Now, this is really a step up from a mylar sheet. So it's a similar material, a similar mylar material, but it actually has a series of pleats in it which trap air. So it's basically a sleeping bag, okay? And these can work in reasonably cold conditions. So this is a great way of preserving body heat. The only downside with them is they don't breathe like a sleeping bag. So you will need to be careful about condensation, not breathing into them, uh, maybe drying them out periodically during the night. But they're a fantastic idea. They're shrink-wrapped, so they don't take up much space. And when you open them up and expand all the cells, they provide quite a lot of warmth. So that's a really good idea. That's something to sleep in. And something to sleep on, I've actually just got a garbage bag here. Okay, so you can fill that up with leaves and things like that and insulate you from the ground, which is really important because you'll lose a lot of heat from the through the ground. Now, I've thrown in an extra item here, which is a uh, Bob Cooper Help Survival Blanket. And what I really like about these, they, they provide some shelter, so they serve a similar purpose to this uh, poncho tarp, but they also have the words help written on them and they're bright and yellow, so they're really great for catching attention. So I carry these in all of my kits. Um, because you know you really want to make yourself visible um, if you're in trouble and you need help. Um, so, but they can serve other purposes as well. So you use them as a survival blanket. You can wrap yourself up in them. Um, you can use them as a shelter and so forth. And finally, out of the items that I'm planning on carrying, I've got uh, just a head net uh, to protect from bugs. Now, some people like a full size. Uh, bug net uh, to cover their entire body, that would be great. Um, this is really a compromise for, for weight. So um, it's a nice small head net that will protect my head and then the rest of my body should be inside one of these, either inside the survival blanket or inside this um, survival bag. Now the next C is a container. So this is some sort of container for carrying water. Now. Obviously, there are ultralight options for this, and if I'm doing an ultralight hike, I would be using um, platypus bottles or perhaps these kind of smart water bottles, okay? But if you're not carrying a conventional cook kit, I think it's a good idea to have a stainless steel water bottle like this. So these stainless steel water bottles can be used in a fire if you need to. So you can see here I've got a little um, clip which can actually go inside the bottle and can be used for hanging it over a fire. And we can then use the water bottle to sterilize water. Now that's if you've got a fire. If you haven't got a fire, you should have some kind of filtration method. So just having one of these bags with an appropriate filter, I think is a great idea. There are more elaborate filters than this that will actually work for more than just particles in the water and, and bacteria and that. They can also remove chemicals, uh, some really good ones of those, but it really depends how much you actually want to carry. For me, I think just a, a water container like this, a stainless steel container that can be used on a fire, and some sort of basic filtration system is, 
is the minimum you'd want to carry. I actually carry the pot that goes with this um, water container as well because that way I've got a second way of boiling water and also carrying water. But uh, the other good thing about these pots is that you can actually put them together like this and you can use them to make char cloth. So obviously you take the plastic plastic lid off the container but you can actually put cotton in here and make char material uh, for making fires. So having that uh, pot is a useful thing. That's just the lid for the pot. You can take it or not take it. It's up to you really. Now the next C is cordage. Now the first five C's that I've shown you so far are really the core of the system and everything else is a bit of a bonus. So cordage is really important. What I've got here is a couple of different types of cordage. I've got paracord which is commonly used for survival scenarios. This particular paracord I've set it up as a ridge line so I can set this up really quickly as a ridge line to set up my tarp. It's got a loop on one end to allow me to attach one end to the tree. I've then got a series of prussic knots made out of this other cordage uh, which can actually be used with toggles to attach my tarp to the ridge line and then the other end of the ridge line is simply tied using a trucker's hitch. This paracord also has um, different types of cordage in the middle so it's got a fishing line, it's got a line that could be used for tinder in a fire however you're probably unlikely to go through and unthread the line unless you absolutely have to. Um, I carry some lighter cordage with me now this is probably not the best choice I'd probably recommend people carry bank line and I'll probably get some bank line the reason is that you can actually unthread it it's made of three different threads and you can use it for stitching, for repairing equipment and so forth. But the reason I carry this particular one, one is I just happen to have it so I thought I may as well use it. But the other thing is um, being a synthetic line you can actually melt the end of it. So I tend to use this particular line quite a lot for making lanyards, for dive gear where you know you don't want stuff that will rot uh, and you want stuff that's fairly strong and you can actually melt once you've tied a knot, melt the rope back into the knot um, which prevents it from coming undone. So all my camera gear and that is attached with, with this sort of line. But I will eventually replace this with bank line because I think bank, bank line is better for general survival. I've thrown in some cable ties here as well. Um, they may or may not be useful for a survival situation. I, I, I tend to carry some in all of my survival kits that are big enough. To be honest, I tend to use it more just for making repairs to equipment just day to day, you know, for attaching bits of dive gear or, you know, whatever I need to do. I, 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 I tend to find I regularly need cable ties for something, so I like to always just have a few with me. Okay, so I'll go through the last five items really quickly. Um, these are almost like bonus items that you carry with you. So they're part of the 10 C's, but um, they're not part of the main, main five essential items. So what I've got here is cotton. Okay, that's the next C. And this is a type of cotton bandana or head cloth. Basically, you can use this uh, to cover your head for protection. You can use it to filter water. Um, because it's cotton, you can use it to make char cloth uh, for fires. So you've got char cloth that can be easily ignited for future fires. So it's got a range of different uses. Compass. So this particular compass has a mirror in it. So if I didn't have this mirror with me, what I'd probably do is just put in a regular survival mirror, which is actually what I do for my ultralight kit. I carry a proper survival mirror for signaling. I would also like to have a magnifying glass in here to see really small things but also to allow you to uh, start fires. And um, this one doesn't have one but I'll probably replace it with a compass that does. So compasses are multi-use items and obviously they're essential for navigation. A decent compass can, can really help um, You know, if you've got to follow a map or if you've got to just find a general direction, they're fantastic. There are obviously other ways of finding direction, but compasses are the most reliable. The next C is cargo tape or duct tape. So I've just got a small roll of duct tape here. This is a multi-use item. You can use it for making all sorts of different things. You can use it for um, band-aids, 
uh, for strapping large cuts and things like that. Um, you can use it for fire, so this actually burns really well. So you can uh, roll up pieces and use it to, um, to get a fire going. So it's a multi-use thing. The next C is candle or some sort of candling device. So I've got a little head, head torch here. This one's just got a small battery in it, just a um, little pill battery. You'd probably want to carry a spare. I find these type of torches, I mean, I've, I've had them going for, you know, entire trip uh, where I've used them maybe for short periods each night. So I find them pretty reliable, but I know that rechargeable batteries are becoming more popular. So that might be a better option if you can get a similar ultralight head torch. Um, I've got an actual candle. So for most of this stuff, once you get past your first five C's, uh, you can probably get away with just a single item for each. Uh, it's good to have a backup for things like cutting tools and for fire making and, uh, and so forth, your shelter and that. But uh, for these last ones, um, it's probably not necessary, but I do have a backup here. Um, either you can have another torch, maybe a small one uh, that goes into um, your belt or fit somewhere else on your body or this is an actual candle so a candle that burns for 12 hours and the final C is a canvas needle so something that you can use for doing repairs to your equipment and for a whole range of other options so that can just be attached to uh, your knife uh, with a bit of uh, duct tape and uh, yep yeah, that's your that's your needle for repairs and maybe if you've got to pull something out of a uh, a wound, um, a splinter or something like that. It's a really good thing to have. So that's my take on the uh, 10 C's of Survival by Dave Canterbury and the Pathfinder School. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna be using for a while and just experimenting with it and see how it, how it works for me. I said I would have two more C's for you at the end. Those two C's are communication and care. One of the greatest hazards and one of the first things to consider is that um, exposure can kill people very quickly. So particularly in extreme environments, if you're in the tropics, the subtropics, you can survive for quite a long time with minimal gear. But um, if you're in the ocean, particularly in very cold waters, so the Southern Ocean in particular, your survival time can be measured in minutes or hours. So one way of dealing with that is to make yourself visible and communicate. So actually get attention. So the sort of things I mean, you can have a whistle. So my backpacks all have whistles on them. Okay, so just um, as part of the actual pack itself, like one of the clips or a separate whistle that you carry. So some method of communicating. Um, if I'm diving, I carry a surface marker buoy. Um, so that I can mark my position clearly above the ocean. So if you're out on the ocean, you're very hard to see, just a person's head above the water. So you have this big, long orange tube that you can inflate and get attention. I've used that many times. And uh, flares, you, you might have flares if you're out on the ocean. Now on the land, you're more likely to communicate with other methods. So of course, whistles, but you can also use your phone. That's an obvious one. Um, if your phone battery is dead, it, you probably should have a way of charging it. So what I tend to do is carry a charge pack with me. If you're out of s mobile range, uh, then you might need something like a personal EPIRB, which I've carried quite a lot. What I carry now actually is a Garmin InReach, which is a device that will allow you to text over the satellite. And it also has an emergency button so you can send for help. So all, these are all ways of getting yourself out of trouble fairly quickly. So being able to make contact with people and get, get help quickly so that you're not stuck out in the environment. Obviously, you'll probably survive a lot longer on land than you will in the ocean. But, um, you know, it, you could be limited in three hours or so, or so survival time if you're in very cold conditions. Um, so again, being able to communicate is really important. Now, I've also included in my uh, communication things like a notepad. So if you're lost, one thing you might do is when you're following a path, you're trying to find your way out of an area, you might leave notes along the way uh, at critical points uh, or signals on the landscape to show people which way you've gone. 
um, that's useful and it's also useful to keep track of information so to know what the landmarks are as you're traveling so that you can go back the way you came or so that you can perhaps find things like water sources and so forth so again that's another aspect of communication there's lots of other things to involved as well um, if you're in a long-term survival situation or a situation where you might have uh, there might have been a major disaster or something like that then you might want to look even beyond just mobile phones and satellite based systems and perhaps have radios okay so maybe a two-way radio or something like that um, the one that I'm showing is actually a VHF radio so it's for, um, for marine work I've actually got compact waterproof VHF radios uh, that will transmit your location that I use for diving work however for land-based stuff you would have to weigh up the different options there are quite a lot of different types of radio options for for land work um, from general citizen band radios to more sophisticated stuff you might also want to consider a radio that gives you access to information so perhaps weather um, reports news reports things like that so there are a number of radios that you can get which are actually powered a range of different ways so you can wind them up yourself and those can be those can be used to charge other devices as well um, they have solar panels on them they have different types of batteries that you can use so they might be a good idea as well to consider under communication and even bring in your fire there and say well you could use fire for communication you could have a signal fire um, you can use your mirrors for for signaling aircraft so there's a whole range of things you could consider in terms of communication that Bob Cooper help blanket that I mentioned earlier is another method of communication so it has the word help written on it so that if somebody sees that they immediately know you're in trouble you're not just out camping you've actually got a problem so again communication and the final C I wanted to mention was care. So care en encompasses a range of different things. It could be just day to day. For example, I always carry uh, some toilet paper and a means of digging a hole, so a little trowel. And things like sunscreen and soap, um, hand wash, all of that kind of stuff to keep healthy. Maybe some toothpaste and a toothbrush if you do get stuck o overnight. Um, under care I also include a first aid kit so I'm not going to go into this in any detail but uh, you pick the items that are appropriate for the particular conditions that you're in so uh, one thing I often carry particularly in the warmer months in Australia is a type of compression bandage and this is for the risk of snake bite um, I mean I've seen lots and lots of snakes while I've been out hiking I've only really had a couple that have got really nasty um, but um, generally they move away from you but it there's always the risk there and also in the marine environment there's uh, situations where a compression bandage can be particularly useful also for things like shark bites and that sort of thing I, I probably would and I do carry a tourniquet when I'm diving in areas where sharks can be it could be potentially an issue uh, something to stop bleeding very quickly when I look at the first aid gear, I tend to prioritize the really the things that can really kill you very quickly. So blood loss is a big issue. So you really want to have ways of controlling blood loss. Band-aids and things like that, I don't tend to bother with too much because a small cut or something, sure they're annoying, but they're usually not a problem, particularly if you've got if you if you're only going to be out overnight. Um, you know, when you get back to your car or to your house, you can always flush flush things out and you know clean the wound and if you're carrying potassium permanganate you can make a disinfectant anyway pretty easily medication I might carry things like um, aspirin if somebody had heart problems the, that could be a useful thing to carry um, I like to carry an anti-diarrhea medication because um, water the lack of water can kill people very quickly so three days is about the maximum you can survive without water and again that's why containers for water and a method of purifying water is so important the reason I carry anti-diarrhea medication is because you lose a lot of water if you do get diarrhea so I want to be able to treat that really quickly so that's an important thing for me to carry uh, and other than that I do carry a bit of painkillers and maybe some sort of 
uh, gloves for, for protection if I have to give somebody else assistance. Uh, I might, sunscreen is another thing which I think comes under the care side of things, prevention. And uh, the same with insect repellent, so some sort of insect repellent. So care is a pretty broad category. I think the last thing I'll probably mention with care is uh, some sort of food source. So if you're out for a day hike, you've probably got some food with you anyway. And food is not a particularly high priority as far as survival goes. Um, you know, often it can be a bad idea to eat if you are in a survival situation because that will require more water, um, particularly protein and things like that. However, if you've got plenty of water, um, you may as well have something to eat uh, just to keep your spirits up and uh, also just for energy. So, um, so you might have stuff that you carried with you uh, for a day hike, but um, I also think it's not a bad idea to include some sort of ration pack, which is basically just a single day's ration, uh, provides 1,200 calories, uh, one or two of these, they're pretty light. They don't require any cooking or preparation. Uh, I've actually found these pretty pretty good when they've got close to the expiry date. I've used them for hikes and uh, they do seem to give me a real boost. So um, yeah, I think having, having some sort of food, um, emergency food in there is not a bad thing to consider. So I hope that's been of interest. Um, I, as I say, I, you know, go through this stuff regularly and this is just my current approach. Uh, what I'm trying out in terms of the 10 C's. So what I might do in the near future is go through some of my more compact, lightweight survival kits. Um, obviously a kit of this size uh, is going to give you much more options and uh, much more capability in a survival situation. However, it's interesting looking at those lightweight kits to sort of see how, how things are prioritized um, and why particular items are chosen. So one thing I haven't mentioned is uh, how I'm going to be carrying all this stuff. So I've got a couple of different day packs I use. Um, one's a small camera bag and I've also got another little bag that I use for carrying camera gear here, uh, which goes into basically any pack. But um, I've got my Mount Laurel Designs burn here, which uh, I use for as a day pack as well, and uh, I'm going to pack all of this gear into there but uh, first it's going to go some of it will go on the outside of the pack because it's stuff I need to access uh, regularly but uh, things that are purely for um, for safety or emergency uh, will go into a waterproof bag that goes on the inside so I'm planning on using this little waterproof bag here